here. Right, we're here, cabin view. <laughs> Let's go in, mind this car, mind this car. I'll close the door. <clears throat> Let's go this way. <clears throat> Let's go into cabin view. This is where you, yeah. this is where you were born, uh, where you lived, wasn't That's it? Right, yes, 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 this is where I was born. <clears throat> And let's see what's inside. Are you going to show me around? Yeah, I'd love to. Show me what it, what yes. it was like. Yes, I'd I wonder love if to. it's changed. I, I think it has. The door is open. Let me open the door. Mm. Mind the step. Mm. Here we are. I can tell you. At the end, oh, this is different anyway for a start. Is it? Yes. Right. There was a, you could get through here. There's some special <coughs> chamber now. But uh, this was open here. That, that's and the this toilet. Was under there. Right. And, and it turned round here and went straight along there. Right, okay, what, the other what we're going to do is we turn the tape off for a minute. Okay. Yeah. So, Mr Chitty. Yeah. How did your family come to be in Rayada? Well, my father left Birmingham as a young man. I think uh, they um, put out an advert. They were started to build the, water, the Ellen Valley Waterworks. And uh, I suppose they were having difficulty in getting uh, work people up there. And he was living in Birmingham with a, a wife and four children, uh, born in Birmingham. And he, I think he saw this notice that was put out asking for, for clerical workers in the Ellen Valley. And uh, he um, made an application and went up there and got a job up there as a clerk and timekeeper. Keeper. So when they first uh, moved here, they, where did they live? Where did they live? Yes. What, when we got there? Yes. Oh, well, uh, we lived in Reda. My father was, uh, he was in lodging in Reda somewhere, I think for about a month or more, a few weeks anyway, or months, before he got a house. And then uh, he brought, he went and fetched my mother and four children from Birmingham uh, in the Bourneville area uh, to the Ellen Valley, to the uh, Reda, to this house that he'd got in Cambrian Place. And then, when did you move to the village? Well, we'd been in that house, I think, I know I was four year old. I was born there and I was four year old, nearly five. And just started school, I think, and then uh, my father managed to get one of the huts that were being built uh, for the workers up there, wooden huts, built all around alongside the river. And we got the number one hut, the first one that was built uh, right up by the bridge over the river. And we lived there. And I can remember the day very well when we walked up from Breda. It was my mother and the four children. Uh, uh, the oldest, uh, Dorothy, my sister, she was about 14 or 15, I think, at the time. I might know about that. And I would, I just started school. I'd only been going to school in Breda for about a month or more. Did your brothers go to school in Breda before you moved to the village? No, no, they didn't, no. Did, did they... Did, did, when, I think they w went to school in Raida, did they, and your father had an argument with the headmaster? Oh, yes, well, that was, oh, that was an older brother, that's right, yes, they did. Can you tell I forgot them? about that, was at Cumdaida School. <laughs> yes, and um, I, they had an argument about something else. I think he'd got, the headmaster had cuffed him or something, and he'd come home crying, and my father had gone to see the master about it and had a row with him, and he took all, the four of us away from Cumdaida School and took us up to Raider School, the other school in Raider. So when you moved to the village, you went to the school in the village? Yes, yeah. Can you remember that, anything about that? Well, that was a big wooden hut, because uh, it was all huts then, there was nothing else there in the village, you see. It was um, only um, the huts that were built that for, for, a common, for, for a living quarters, like. And they were built for the workers that were building the dams. They had a contracting firm building them. I think there were about 18 or 20 of them, all the way down the village, about, uh, down the village alongside the river. And the school was in a wooden hut as well, was yes, it? And that, yes, on the, on the bank just above. And it was a large wooden hut. And there was quite a, a, a number of children, really, because uh, there were farm collection from farms and uh, roundabout, as well as workers in the village. And did you have a headmaster? Yes, his name was Mr. Upstone, and I think he was a Leicester man, but uh, he, he was the headmaster, and his wife was the headmistress, and he also had a daughter, Emsy, and she was a teacher at the school as well, because there was um, 
two big classrooms. Uh, the older children were in one and the younger children in the, in the other, where they were separate, you see, two, two classrooms. And did you like school? Yes, yes, oh, yeah, yeah, I loved it, yes. Did you do sums? Yes, yeah. Were you very good at them? Yeah, well, yes, I kept pace with it, you know, yeah. yeah. Was there a special way of doing the sums? Well, not really, no, I don't think so. I know when I left school anyway, I was doing algebra. Mm. Uh, what about mental arithmetic? Well, uh, mental arithmetic, uh, we, we used to, uh, on, on certain days uh, during the week, he'd have us in a semicircle. He'd, uh, he'd be on a little bit of a platform about his eye with his desk. He was always looked down at the class, you know. And he'd have us in a semicircle around him, and uh, he'd uh, would, would question uh, mental arithmetic problems, you know, such as uh, how many oranges would you get for a shilling at three April seats and that sort of thing. And uh, as you, uh, first one who answered would be moved up in the semicircle to get to the top, from the, you know. And I was always one of the quickest, and was, we soon got to the top. And what did you do to enjoy yourself? Well, uh, we, I know I used to do a lot of birds nesting, really, when I, when I was a young lad. We, not, not to rob them, you know, just looking for them and sort of thing. And being interested, and I also collected about 30 eggs while, uh, uh, while I was uh, going to school of different sorts. And did you ever bring anything home when you were bird nesting? Oh, yes. Uh, yes, there was uh, an owl's nest, we'd, we'd, we'd noticed. Uh, an owl going into a, a large oak tree, wood oh, was thing, this... Girth, I was thinking, you know, and it's all hollow, a very old oak tree. And uh, it was all at the top there, and you, we used to stand on one another's back to look into it. You could see into it. And you could see some young owls there. And we knew it was there, but anyway, we went to watch it the next day, and the, one of the owls was on the floor at the bottom of the tree. And I picked it up and took it home, and they carried it in front of me like this. And then while we was walking home, it messed all down my trousers and my, and my jacket. Oh, I was in a dickens of a mess. And when I got home, my father gave me a good idea and sent me to bed. <laughs> Did you have to take it back the next day? Yes, uh, yes, and I had to take it back the next day. Did you go out for days out at all to the seaside? Yes, we had um, a Sunday school outing every year, once a year, you know. And um, uh, they had an excursion train from Raider to Aberystwyth. And they really enjoyed that. And uh, we had, uh, had quite a time, really. I remember one incident. <laughs> I was, had a donkey ride. There was a string of donkeys on the sand. And I uh, had a donkey ride. And when we got to the end of the run, I went to get off and got me one foot stuck in the stirrup. And then the donkey was walking along, dragging me along on one leg and the other one in the in the saddle, in the uh, stirrup. And uh, anyway, the man that was with the donkeys, he was well behind because there was a string of donkeys. And he come running up. He said, oh, Jesus wept. He said, what have you done? <laughs> <laughs> and what about the canteen? Did your father work at the canteen? Yes. But there was another incident as well at, um, at uh, one of the Sunday school trips we had. We were looking around there for uh, Urinal, you know, and. Uh, couldn't find one because, I mean, we, we didn't know where they were. Anyway, after looking for some time, there was a, a, a young lad there and uh, the lad was with me, asked him uh, if he knew we have a place, you know. He said, where can we make water? <laughs> she said, God, he said, you can't make water. <laughs> so did you find it? <laughs> yes, we found it eventually. Yeah. Yeah. So going back to the canteen, what job yeah. did your father do there? Well, it, that was a part-time job, that was. It was only open for certain hours, you know. Uh, but he had to keep the stock going, there was the beer and the spirits and that. And uh, it was really quite a uh, long day. And one of my sisters, older sisters, helped him uh, in the bar in the evenings and that. And it was quite a biggish uh, canteen. And it was all stone slabs on the floor with sawdust. And uh, I used to rake this sawdust over, uh, you know, to smart it up a bit at night after they'd closed. And I used to find some sixpences or seventy bits and, and that. Did you keep them? Oh, yes, I kept them, yes. Oh, OK, yeah. can we stop there for a minute? <clears throat> OK. 
So when you left the wooden huts, you came to live here in Cabin View. That's right, yes. Yes, we did. Can you describe it to me? It was used as a shop, was it? Yes. Yes, well, this, this was a... There was a counter up to that wall there, like a sort of a half circle like that, went straight along the back there. Oh, and the, we had the, um, a till here on this end, uh, where the, you know, for the money and that, and a pair of scales, uh, just about here, that was. And we had sweets and chocolates and things in this window. And on the counter, all the way down, there was a, a side of bacon and cheese, you know, a whole cheese, you know, a big whole round cheese, and a box of butter and uh, things like that on the counter. And they were all uh, squared holes on the wall, all the way round there, with uh, all kinds of things like flour and, uh, and all kinds of grocery things, you know. Who worked in the shop? Well, my mother looked out in the daytime because my father was in the office, you see, next door. Because uh, the office was next door. Is that the house next door? Yes, yes. There's the office is this extension part. The house is at the back with the offices on the front. There was two offices. Uh, the one was uh, with a bay window facing the road was the plan room. You know, all the plans of these waterworks they kept in there in cubby holes. And the other part was the big office where my father did the wages and was the work superintendent, a man named Mr Swan. Did you help your mother in the shop? Oh yes, uh, we all had to do that because sometimes she was very busy with, with us four kids. What did you do? Well, we, we used to weigh things, you know, like we used to sell tobacco. Twist tobacco was a, we sold a lot of that at that time to the people in the men on the, on these, uh, in the, working, you know, they used to take, carry the twist in their pocket. And several of them used to chew this twist as well as smoke it. Mm. And so, did you used to help your mother collecting the orders? Did well, yeah, I, I used to go around with the orders. I had a little red book that I used to take the orders in the morning. And then we'd take them round at night when we took the bread round, because my mother used to break the bread during the daytime. And where did you get the other groceries from? Did your father have to order them from yeah, somewhere yes, else? Yes, he used to meet the traveller once a month at the Lion Hotel in Raider. He, he, he would get a postcard telling him when the uh, representative was coming to Raider and uh, asking, you know, tell my father if he wanted anything to make place his order or anything. He'd see him at the hotel at a certain time. And the dad used to go down on his bicycle to Raider and uh, meet the traveller and put his order in. And it was a grocery firm, old, old say grocery firm at Liverpool uh, called Jones, Price Jones, I think, or something like that. And then the goods were delivered. Were they delivered to here or were no, they... No, to come? Raider Station. And how did you get them from Raider Station? Well, uh, well my father had to pay a, uh, for a conveyance to bring them up to the village, you see. And that was why eventually, after some years, that he uh, decided to... Uh, he asked the, the city water department, the water, Birmingham Water Department, to uh, release him from it and close the shop because... Uh, uh, what he was paying for transport, to transfer the stuff from Raider, was taking all the profit. He was making nothing out of it. It was all the work for nothing. Mm. Did you ever help him and did you ever go and fetch it from Raider? Did oh, yes, yes. We, <laughs> my father made us a bit of a truck with two bicycle wheels on. And we used to go, if, it was, if it wasn't too much to put on this little truck, you know, we used to go down and fetch it from Raider Station. If it was only like a small quantity, that was when he wasn't anything. After the traveller had been, when there was quite a few things would come, he'd have to have a, uh, a conveyance to bring them up. But at odd times, he'd have order odd things, small things, and he made this truck so that we could go down to Raider and uh, station and fetch them. And it's nearly three miles, you know, from the Ellen Valley down to Raider. Must have been quite hard work. Pardon? Was it hard work? Oh, well, yes, it was really. Yes. Yes. Oh. But you don't notice it when you're kids. <laughs> And did you ever go to the Mayfair? Yes, yes. I always, well, it was a big thing, you know. The Mayfair, well, in those days, it used to get a lot of people. It was a crowd in Raider for the Mayfair. What can you remember of it? Well, oh, just the roundabouts, you know, and the stores or different things, kites and sewing things and that, rings and rubber rings and that. And all that sort of entertainment, like, you know. Mm. Can you tell me about that machine that you used to hit with a hammer? Oh, yes. Uh, that was, um, there was a pole 
about ooh, six or seven foot high pole with a, a thing that you hit with a big mallet at the bottom. You connect it up to this pole that sent a, an iron thing up there, hit a bell on the top. And you, you know, if you hit it hard enough, you've got to hit it very hard to make to send this thing up to hit the bell, and uh, you've got a prize then, you see. And, did you uh, did you try? Oh, I tried several times. I could never get it to ring the bell because you had to give it a heck of a, a, heck of a whack, you know, to uh, get it to uh, ring the bell. How did you get to Red? Sometimes you walked. Did, were any we other all ones? yes, you know, often walked yes, but uh, we had, we all had bicycles anyway eventually. And I had a motorbike anyway in the end. Can you tell me about when you were coming out of Rayada and the policeman stopped you? <laughs> oh yes, uh, we were coming on one moonlight night. It, oh, it was a lovely night, moonlight about oh, it was 10 o'clock I think. And when we got about, uh, oh, about a quarter of a way I think from Rayada, we were coming down the hill quite fast by the Nyeth gates. There, you wouldn't know it any of us. The Nyeth gates, it was where the railway when they built a railway, you know, for the Ellen Valley, it was where that terminated. And there's a pathway down to a farm called the Nyeth Gates. Anyway, it was just by there, a policeman put his bike across the road and stopped us. <laughs> and uh, of course, I hadn't got, the, I'd got a uh, lamp on the bike, but didn't light it. It was an acetylene one. It wasn't a light. And of course, he uh, stopped me and took my name, and I had to pay 76 at the next court case when it came up. <laughs> Right. Okay, can we just stop that there, please? Thank you. Did your mother do anything else here besides run the shop and make the bread? Did she no. take visitors in? Oh, we did, yes. Eventually, yes. She took visitors in because we got four uh, large double bedrooms here, you know, four large bedrooms. And she used to take fishing visitors. They'd come and stay for, for a week or a fortnight fishing. And I used to do pretty well out of it and all because uh, I used to clean the shoes for them and I'd put them by the bedroom door for the, you know, for the morning when they got up. And when they left at the end of the week, they used to give me half a crown or something like that. And I used to save that. I know I saved over five pound. <laughs> and the five pound was a lot of money in those days. Can you tell me about the lady that was very unhappy and who went up to the dams? Oh, yes, that was, mm, that was the, vicar, the parson's wife at the, uh, at the Baptist chapel. Uh, his name was Mr. Morris. Anyway, he had a wife and she was, had been very depressed for some time. And uh, she had two nephews uh, come to stay with her for a week. And anyway, on a Sunday, this particular Sunday morning, she took these two young boys quite early on the Sunday morning up to the first dam. And when she got up there, she was to climb over the fence and uh, jump into the water and drowned herself. Anyway, uh, the two little boys ran back down to the uh, Baptist Chapel, which was about, well, quite a goodish way, about ten minutes, it would be a, at least a ten minutes walk. And uh, they went and told him, and he, he went running up to see what had happened, and saw his wife in the water, floating in the water, in the, in the lake. And at the first dam, that is, near to the village. This, and. Uh, he ran down then to, to the village, and our house was the first one he came to, this one. And he told my father about it, and uh, uh, my father went straight up and took a long rope and a hook with a hook on the end. And uh, he went up and hooked her out of the water. And when we got back up there, there was a doctor staying with us at the time for a week's fishing uh, from Birmingham, this doctor, and uh, I took him up with me. And uh, when we got up there, my father dragged it out of the water and would get the body was lying outside. Anyway, he and the doctor carried the, her up onto the top uh, where there was some, a lot of large slabs. And uh, the doctor laid her out there and was uh, trying to resuscitate her, you know, for some time, but uh, it was too late. I mean, it had taken too long a time. She had been in the water, it must have been at least an hour, I would think. Mm. Did you say that you thought that the, her hat and her clothes were keeping her on top of the water? Well, I think it was because uh, I don't see what else it was unless it was the length of time she'd been in the water because the bodies come up again, don't, don't I believe, when, don't they, when they, uh, they're drowned. Anyway, you could see her, she'd got rather a large hat on and you could see the hat floating on top of the water as if it was floating there and uh, she was there.
Mm. Yeah, it's very sad. Mm, it was indeed. Mm. So, what about something like Christmas time? Can you remember Christmas time at all when you were yeah, young? Yes, well, we used to have a lovely um, do at, in the schoolroom up here uh, at Christmas. Uh, the um, secretary of the City of Birmingham Water Department was a man named Anthony Lees, and he used to give us a, 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 a spread every Christmas. Ian used to bring his wife down and they used to have this tea party and my mother and father did the catering for it, you know. And uh, it was also a prize giving. There was prizes given for uh, the work at school for years, you know, work at school. And they used to present the prizes as well. And that was at Christmas time? That was at Christmas, yeah. So when you went to the, the new school up here, the, 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 the stone school, yeah, up on the, not, yeah. not the wooden school. Yeah. Can you tell me anything about that? Well, that wasn't the new school, mm. you see, yeah. Mm. Yes, can you, yeah. can you tell me, can you remember anything what the classrooms were like? What the what? How, how many classrooms were there? Oh, there were two classrooms. There was a young, the youngest, you know, from infants up to about uh, 10 or 11, I think, and then the other one was for, for 10 up to uh, 14. And... When we talked before, we talked about the heating and the lighting in the village. Yeah. Um, because you, you had electric, you had lights, didn't you? Street yeah, lighting. Yeah. Yes, when they built the new houses, they put poles all down the village, the, the main road, you know, down, down this main road, and uh, with lights on, and uh, that was uh, uh, all wired, and the, the houses were wired as well with cappy and casing. The new houses, this was, were all uh, wired with this cappy and casing. It was wooden then, you know. Mm. And um, my father, he only paid ten ten pound a week for that house, for this house. For this. That was all, and that that included the electric. Yeah. But mind you, you could only use it at night. It was uh, you couldn't use it. There was no plugs, only just the lighting. That's all. So, how much did he pay? Did he pay ten shillings a week? Ten, ten shillings a week. Huh? Mm. Right. Okay. Can you stop there? Do you want to get a date on that? Um, um, well, of course, you could get a lot of potential in in those days. Mm. <laughs> what year did you move in? Can you remember what year you moved into cabin? Into this, you? into this. Uh, well, I reckon I was about seven year old. I think seven or eight year old, something like that. I think. Mm. So it'd have been about nineteen oh nine, nineteen oh eight. Yeah, about that. I would think. Yeah. Yes. Okay. The baby in the ceiling. All oh, right. Yes. Yes. When going back now to your very early years, I don't know whether you'll remember or not, but your mother had quite a lot of children, didn't she? Yes, she did. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you were living it when you were living in the wooden huts. Yeah. It was a bit. Was it a bit crowded? Well, it was a bit. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Can mm -hmm. you tell me what she used to do with the baby? Well, we used to put it in the, in the clothes basket with the hook over it and pull it up to the ceiling. I've been told, but I can't remember much about that. But my older sister told me that it was, uh, she was uh, older than me, so she told me about it. Mm. Mm. Right. I don't know what else there is there. I know she used to put it up and down on a pulley. Right. He teach you how to. Write. Okay, well, we'll ch cover that with you. Mm. Can you just stop a minute? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> What other things did you do in Rada? If, if, if you could go in on your bike, was there anything else you used to go to? Well, not really. <laughs> we used to go courting, I think. <laughs> Where did you go courting? We used to go down there. Do you know, come to the uh, Rada church. Uh, not the one that we've seen this morning, the one that, and the other one. Well, there's a lovely road down there that leads to Lanidlow's. And that was the real way the courting couples went down that road down there. Because it's very quiet down there, fairly quiet and did, nice. Did you have a girlfriend? Yes. <laughs> what was her name? Yeah. Well, uh, I had a girlfriend named Avril Johns. But uh, well, uh, anyway, when I went back, and got, I got a job in Birmingham and uh, I went up there on holiday and, and got a job in Birmingham, never came back to Wales. <laughs> Did you ever go to the cinema? Yeah, what in Rainer? Yes, I think I went twice. They opened the cinema, but it wasn't very popular. I mean, it wasn't... Uh, up to much really, it was an old building and that down on the, well, I don't know what they call it now. Um, do you know where the police station is? Well, just a bit lower down the hill, there's an opening uh, to the right. 
It was down there, the, some of the, a largish building down there, a wooden structure place. And that was, they used that as a picture house. And you went, you went there? Yeah, yes. Oh, I was very excited, that was. <laughs> For us, you know, I've never seen anything like that before. Mm. Moving pictures. And I know you went to work in Thandrindod when yes, you were... Yes, that was my first job when I left school at 14. Was yeah, My father got me a job at um, a large uh, grocery and uh, bakery um, shop in London Wells in Temple Street called HQ Coats. And I got a job there and uh, with a living in, seven, uh, seven chillies a week. Did you enjoy it? Yes, I was quite happy there. I was there for about two years, I think, and then I moved to a, a better class shop down by the station there uh, that was a very high class confection shop. And, uh, and uh, I was there and for oh, up till the war, 1942. I think it was. No, 19... Uh, 1914. Um, uh, uh, yeah, 1914. Uh, 1914, yes. Yes. And what did you do to enjoy yourself in Landrindod? Well, I used to go to the, to the, they had a very good theatre there called the Pavilion in Landrindod, and I used to go there quite often when I worked in Landrindod Wells. Did you ever go up to the lake? Oh, yes. I learned to skate there on that lake at Landrindod Wells. And the lodge in Craig Road, I don't know whether you know Craig Road, yeah. Mm. By the Emporium. Yeah, I, I was lodged there. So did you come back at weekends? Yes, I, I had a motorbike in those days and used to uh, go home on the motorbike. Right. Okay. Can you remember when you were living, when you were growing up here in Cabin View, was there ever any fires? Or where, where, if, if there, was there any fires, house fires? No, I never remember never. anything. So I right. never remember anything like that. No. And was the hospital still here then, or would you have had to go to Raider? No, I don't. Uh, we had to go to Raider then. You know that was when the all the huts went, and the uh, new houses were built. Uh, the, the, the they closed that place down. You see, the old hospital was up by the bridge, and uh, it was closed. It was offices and uh, hospital as well all in one big block of wooden huts. And uh, my father was working there in the office there then, you see. But of course, when these new buildings were built and these new offices, uh, all that lot was, uh, went. So uh, there was no hospital after that. So where exactly were the wooden huts, the rows of wooden huts? All the way down the side of the river, all the way down. The other side of the road is the road here, and the huts were all the way in one long line right down the side of the river. What about what, the trees weren't here then? Oh, there were no trees, no, nothing at all. As a matter of fact, it used to, uh, they, they had uh, two large um, horses and uh, two men, and they used to mow the grass. The grass was long, but this high every year, you know, all the way down there. And they used to cut, cut that once a year with scythes, these two men. And then it was all gathered in, and these two horses used to take it to, to the stables, which are on the other side of the river by the little spring bridge. It used to be the stables there, black, a row of black huts, which were stables, and they had two cart horses, and one with a, a sort of a brake, a bit of a brake thing, coach, or whatever they call it. And they used to take the boss and his wife down to Adrian's, I think. And you had a stables here, did you? Yes. Yeah. We'll, go, we'll go out in a moment and look at the stables. But yeah, yeah. Did you say the vicar used to leave his horse here when he used to go up to the church? Uh, oh yes, the vicar used to come. Uh, the vicar used to. Uh, we were under the um, vicar at Lanuthal. Uh, Lan he was the vicar for this area. So he uncovered this this church up here, and he used to come once a month to give all the communion. And uh, he used to come in a pony and trap. And uh, he used to leave his horse in our stable, you see. And he used to give me the money for a bucket of oatmeal out of the shop to give to the horse. And I used to put this oatmeal in a bucket and half a bucket of water and stir it up and give it to the horse in the stable. And you kept a pig here as well? Yeah. Yeah, we did. Well, that was during the war. Uh, they encouraged everybody then to have a pig, you know, during the war. 
and grow their own vegetables and things like that because of the tremendous loss of food that was being lost coming across the Atlantic from America. They were sending, they were, you know, submarines were sinking or in the ships. Did you kill the pig? Well, we had the postman, Jack the postman, that brought us the letters up from Rainda on his red bike. He he killed the pig. It was one of the jobs that he did in his spare time. My father got in to kill the pig when he killed it. But we had a litter of pigs first. <laughs>